there we go, that is me. My hair hasn't changed, so it's all good. Um, so I've been given just a short 15 minutes um, to share some ideas with you. Um, so as James very kindly mentioned, I'm from, we use the abbreviation EHL, from Lausanne. Um, so my specialization is hospitality tech, and I do various other things. And I'm also very happy to see some previous students in the room. Uh, so hi to them. Um, I just want to give you, from the research we do and what we observe uh, the school, uh, what I'll consider in a way a little bit the top 10 um, trends to be aware of, either available now or coming shortly uh, for the restaurant industry. Uh, this is a no order preference. Uh, it's not a top 10 countdown, uh, but just things I think it would be important for you to take back from the Griff event and have on your radar. Uh, and this is the day the clicker stops working. Good. So that was my starting slide. So I thank the organizer for giving me the, uh, the after lunch slot, which is always the best one of the day to get. So hopefully I can try and keep you awake for the next 15 minutes. First thing I think very interesting is alternative payments. Uh, we've gone from crash cash to credit card. Uh, I think we're now going to start seeing country by country, because it is country specific, um, a wave of new payment options coming in uh, from obviously Google Pay, uh, Google Wallet, Apple Pay, um, and also dependent upon your location, uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay. If you look at the numbers behind that, uh, Alipay has 780 million daily users on Alipay. Um, and the research has been proven that visitors from China have a great affinity to be able to pay using their own currency uh, through things like Alipay. Um, so I think keeping an eye out on then of having obviously having those payment solutions integrated uh, into your point of sale uh, systems. The other thing that is very interesting is um, staying on the payment is facial payment. Um, this is not super far-fetched, and I think this also links a lot in with just with general facial recognition. Um, it is obviously a biometric area. You may see now the airlines, or sorry, airports have been doing this for security check. Now it's moving into actually as a boarding pass for airlines. Uh, actually just finished a nine-week research project on this for hotels, and there's actually the amount of hotels, especially large resort hotels, are looking at facial recognition for check-in. Uh, there's a lot of people picking up that, especially in Singapore. Um, and I think we'll now see this move and come down just because we'll naturally be used to doing things with facial uh, recognition, uh, even while our phones were doing this. So I think this is not a thing for now. This is not far off. Um, if you have, for example, in a um, employee canteen, um, some of that, we, especially with a large volume of people, this can be very interesting just because of the speed um, of that. So I think this is, again, not for a now, but maybe just a few years down the uh, line, have a look out for that one. <coughs> uh, this is just talking about someone. This one, I think, is super interesting. Um, I'm just going to spend a few minutes on this one. Is sentiment analysis. Um, so obviously, you've maybe been to events, and everyone talks about big data and AI. Um, <coughs> you know, big data is just unstructured data. Uh, but what these guys are doing is actually a startup we work with at the school called Travel Appeal out of Italy. Um, and what they're doing is in real time for hotel, restaurant, destination, they are looking at all the comments written about, for example, your restaurant. This can be on review sites, it can be on social media. Um, and what they're doing is they are looking at the words that people are using about uh, your restaurant. And they're breaking then it down into sentiment. Are people talking positively or negatively about your restaurant? But they're breaking it down into uh, service, staff, cleanliness, uh, speed of service. Um, so there is actually, and then if you as a restaurateur, you can go actually into the different categories and actually look in real time what people are saying about a certain aspect of your business. Um, so here you can take it down to a list of the reviews, even down to the individual review, and there it will highlight in green and red the positive and negative words people are saying. Uh, this, for me, can give you great insight and in real time on your business. 
But where I find this one very interesting, I'm going to pick up on the, on the next slide, is the, the stage two where companies such as these are going to be taking reviews. I mean, you may already be re using review software. Uh, and you get your customer survey results and et cetera. But I think what we're seeing now with the sheer amount of data we have nowadays, there's going to be a version two. Um, and for that, what I'm going to show you now is actually research that we've been doing at the school. Um, so we're using a, uh, a tool that reviews in real time about 25,000 websites, articles, blogs um, for the restaurant industry. And what we've been doing is we've been breaking down looking at what's called weak signals, I not much chatter or people talking about something versus strong signals. Um, and we're checking in daily, as I said, around these 25,000 uh, sources of information to try and get an idea of what is positive versus negative trends. So here, for example, we can see that a strong signal uh, on this one, virtual reality. This is a big talking point um, on this versus, for example, digital signage, not much chatter going on. So it's a little bit trying to find out what the trends are and what's going on, and we're doing this uh, as an online tool. Um, for example, consumer behavior, cooking classes, coming out very strong. Um, convenience is another one. So we've also categorized the different aspects we're looking in. Um, and then obviously for the F&B service environment, fast casual, fast food, real food, food delivery. Uh, so again, these are the kind of information that we're looking to get um, and checking in. Where I think this one is interesting, uh, and it's also what the, the one I showed you before and the sentiment of doing, is if you can also start predicting trends and you link it in with negative comments, this becomes super interesting. So example, uh, you might be a hotel and you have your German customers are complaining about lack of choice on your breakfast buffet. Well, if you know from the trends analysis like this, what Germans are currently eating for breakfast, uh, because there's a lot of chatter about it and you combine the two, this is when you can actually start adapting your F&B offering uh, for a certain clientele type. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but I think this is a real good usage of uh, truly what is big data. And the thing is here, nothing is structured. It's unstructured information. Um, so I think we now need to start thinking more as a data-driven industry, uh, just because the data is there and the tools are there to use and analyze it. Next one, I think, is already prevalent, uh, is voice recognition. And I'm just going to ask the gentleman at the back if they could start the video. I just have a short video for you. No, come back. 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 Click on the video, please. So I'm not going to name the restaurant, but you probably worked out who it is. This is not a mock-up or fake, this is real. Can we put the audio louder, please? Nappy Mine Nuggets Frites. Tous les petits jus, tous les Big Mac. So this is actually for the drive, and what they're doing is when they're preparing the orders, they're doing it using a voice recognition. And also they're through the cameras, they're analyzing the cars coming in through the drive. Easy. The system is very visual since displayed indicators allow me to identify and analyze the situation in real time. There are three colors, green, orange and red, that we find on two indicators. The first one gives me the average delivery time of the rush, it's a graph, and the second one indicates me the real service time per car. In summary, when everything is ok, the colors are green, when there are decisions to make, the colors are either orange or red. This allows me to reassign staff members when there are blocking points. The phone doesn't ring anymore. We went from 30 complaints per month to approximately three. So there for the drive, so what they've actually done is they, they've reduced a uh, verification step 
So they're getting their orders out faster through. This has been running now for about a year and a half. And a few weekends ago, they actually processed 60 cars in 15 minutes, uh, which is unheard of. An interesting one there is the amount of errors has gone down as well. It's accuracy increasing. Um, and the crazy one, that one, the actual restaurant where they were trialing it, and they now moved to four, <coughs> it was the only uh, restaurant of theirs that had an increase in sit-down sales. And no one could work out why. And then someone just politely pointed out, well, the car park's empty. And the fact of actually processing cars faster meant there were no car, less cars waiting in the car park. Therefore, people driving past, oh, look, the McDonald's is, is quiet. Let's go for lunch. Uh, so it had a different effect than was originally thought. And it's currently running at 99.7% accuracy um, on a daily basis. So this is for me, and again, you know, well, we're not talking here like Google Home or Siri. You know, this is proper sort of employee in, uh, in, industry-based uh, voice recognition. So I think this is definitely also going to be a hot topic coming up um, because you can use it for so many things, from stock control, from goods received. Um, there's a lot of things we can do via voice, uh, not having to have phones or tablets or spreadsheets. Uh, so I think this one is important. Also, taking that one, voice learning. Um, so you can also now do more for your employees where they can learn different languages uh, and obviously hospitality-based phrases that we say uh, through voice learning. So I think the whole area of voice is actually super interesting. Um, even down to, I'm not going to show a picture of this, actually a group of my students uh, who I just finished uh, another project with, and it was voice recognition for restaurants. Uh, we've actually worked with 30 restaurateurs about what they would want to do with, with for example, like an Alexa. Uh, we actually managed to program Alexa into a point of sale system. Uh, so the restaurateur could say, what, what was my sales yesterday? How many covers? How do my food sales compare to last week? And Alexa would be giving the answers. Uh, so it was very much a proof of concept, uh, and it worked. Uh, and we ran live demos for about four weeks uh, in five restaurants. We're very much back of house. Um, so again, no amazing conclusions on that one. Um, but just an interesting idea of actually integrating voice into point of sale and managerial operations. Uh, another one, I think, guest messaging. Uh, this is one, and I know there's a session on uh, Gen Z. Uh, we're talking now from a guest perspective. Uh, just traditional communication methods and barriers are definitely breaking down. Um, in the hotel world, there's a lot trying this now. Uh, so literally, WhatsApping guests or having guests WhatsApping businesses. Um, and it's definitely a generational thing, uh, even though we probably all WhatsApp. Um, Does anyone know the daily number of WhatsApp messages sent currently? It's currently at 60 billion messages a day just on WhatsApp. Uh, and that doesn't include WeChat. It's absolutely insane. Um, but then especially if you look at Gen Z, you know, these people now, uh, you know, they can technically vote. Um, you know, nearly three in 10 say they text people who they're physically with, um, which is just crazy. Um, you know, but these are the smartphone text generation. Um, you know, and for them, it would be normal to actually text a restaurant, hey, can I have a table tonight? Is there a table available? Do, what, do you have a vegan option available today? Um, you know, they would actually find it too laborious to go and check on a website and download the menu in PDF. Uh, fine, you can also, on these now systems, you can run AI behind. So it's a standard question and give a standard answer. What time do you open? Fine, AI can answer that because it, it would know a set of rules. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily all the time need a human being behind in answering. But this is also one I wouldn't ignore. Uh, as I said, you know, hotels are working through this as well. Um, for me, the big one, uh, and if you are keeping up the news, there's, again, some controversy on this. This one will definitely come through, and it's going to be 5G. This, for me, will be probably one of the biggest game changes technology-wise uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, and it's not just the increase in speed. Um, uh, you know, the different countries are going to be rolling out 5G uh, at different times. Um, you know, with some of the speeds promised, you will literally download a high-definition movie over your phone in about three seconds, uh, just with the speed that you can download. But the interesting one here is, is the latency of uh, 5G. Uh, in China, they've had vets who've been doing remote operations on animals 300 kilometers away um, on cellular uh, data. 
And now, because 5G will happen, uh, even though there's obviously some going to be government interest because the main component is Huawei, and there's Chinese government stuff in, but that will get pushed through. Um, this is where I think you will finally see the explosion of the Internet of Things. Uh, Cisco think there could be 50 billion connected devices within the next three years. Uh, and because of this latency, it's literally down to 0 0.1 milliseconds, you could literally now have all your fridges, freezers, cookers, employees, whatever device it is, hooked up and get real-time information on this. Whereas before, on Wi-Fi 4G, there was always going to be bugs on this. Uh, but I think 5G will be a big push on this one for having truly connected businesses. Um, so I think this one is, again, keep an eye out. Again, different countries will be rolling out at different times. Um, and to finish, because I have 30, no, I've gone over 30 seconds, sorry. Uh, one, this is a real boring subject, but the whole area of security and compliance uh, is something that should not be uh, ignored. Uh, we, we've all gone through the pain of PCI DSS. Now you've also gone through GDPR. Um, all these compliance issues will not be going away, uh, especially about the usage of data. Uh, so I would say that is one area just to keep an eye out. Uh, and ensure that you are within compliant and legal. Um, that is me. Uh, I'm hoping that for many years technology was uh, the elephant in the room. Everyone hated technology. The systems never spoke to each other. It was super expensive. It always broke down. Um, hopefully there is a sentiment that technology now can improve our businesses, your businesses. Um, but that's my 15 minutes worth if I was to give you what I think are the top 10 things to keep an eye out. Thank you very much.